I saw Annihilation a little earlier tonight, and I really, really enjoyed it. I'd consider this a sci-fi intellectual thriller, sort of. I mean, it's not really that intellectual, but it, it, it goes way beyond what most movies do. And I really appreciated that. You know, I liked that about Inception, too. I don't know if intellectual is really the right word, but that's the word that a lot of people are using for it, so I'll go with it. But it always had me asking, what's next? And not in one of those ways where you're, you're stressed because you feel like the villain is about to uh, do something terrible to the good guys. It's not like that. I mean, it's more in a way that you truly, truly have no idea what to expect next, and yet it makes you think about a lot of stuff at the same time. I like those kinds of movies. I'll likely see it again in a couple days. It had a little bit of fear and loathing in Las Vegas going on, in that the plot appeared to be getting muddier as time went on. But at least this has a payoff at the end. Whereas in Fear and Loathing, it was just a kind of a little moral that they put at the end. But I still love that movie. The way the plot seemed to become muddier until the end could be seen either as a, a reflection of what the reality represented in the movie, or it could be seen as a flaw. I look at it as the former, but maybe you won't be able to. But the thing that made it kind of seem to get muddier is that I would eventually forget why they were going into the Shimmer in the first place. You know, I started to wonder whether there was really a solid reason. But then by the end I realized there was. When I talk about people going into the Shimmer, there's this... There's this thing that that the government... To the people they called it a chemical spill or something, and they, they tried to get people to, to leave all this... this area of land because this thing that's growing like the way that cells multiply and you can see through it you can walk through it but things change on a on a dna level that are in there and when you're in this life form if you can call it that whatever it is time doesn't flow for you the same way either and so the government sent a bunch of people in, but only one person returned, but they weren't quite the same. They were changed, but not in a way that you could, you could truly pinpoint. The biologist, Lena, played by Natalie Portman in the first part of the movie, continued to say, well, I don't believe it, or something to that degree. Um, I can't remember if that was the exact phrase that she would use, but it was just the, her general, oh, I don't believe this stuff that's right in front of me kind of thing. I mean, it's already, there's already this incredible phenomenon that is most likely alien in nature, and she knows that going into this place that things are going to get messed up, but yet she refuses to believe things that are right in front of her. I mean, she again, she eventually changed on that, but it was just still kind of irritating. And that, that right there is, for me, the thing that took this movie from being a 5 out of 5 down to a 4 out of 5. The music was a very positively curious thing. I really enjoyed the guitar work they had at many points, albeit very simple stuff, but still, it was very refreshing for this type of movie. And then there was other stuff that sounded like multiple didgeridoos that are able to play at different pitches, mixed with just a number of, of very unusual sounding instruments, but still very kind of, I don't know, ethereal. And every so often it would sound like something that you'd hear from Brian Eno or something. Some very unusual tonal environments. It was certainly none of the crap you hear on most movie trailers. I really enjoyed hearing Crosby, Stills, and Nash's helplessly hoping at a, at a few points in the movie. I mean, it's, it's when they were wanting to listen to music, that the, the character was wanting to listen to music, but still, it was just, it was just really nice to hear that song. It, 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 it brought a different feeling to that part of the movie. It was a very good choice. And I tell you, 
most movie trailers, like the ones I saw for that before this movie, most movie trailers make me not want to see the movie, even if it might be a great movie. I mean, I, I've said before, there's this, uh, I got to see a new trailer for Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and if I would have seen that before want, before possibly wanting to see the movie, that, that trailer would have made me just completely steered me away from the movie. Couldn't even use any of the music from the original movie. That that shit just bothers the hell out of me. I don't know what the studios are thinking when they somehow think it's a good idea to use the same recycled, awful trailer music for 95% of the movies. And then there are these, 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 they use the same fade to white snapshot uh, look to uh, clip between different scenes. And whenever it does, you hear this sound, you know, from from the over-the-top soundtrack. You know? And man, that shit gets old. Well, why do they keep doing... Just Is there some... Are, I mean, maybe they actually work. Maybe that actually makes people want to see this shit, or they wouldn't keep doing it, or... I don't know, maybe they just don't know what to what to do for uh, for the trailers. I don't know, but... Anyway, I've went on on, on on just kind of off subject there, but uh, I really, really enjoyed Annihilation. Four out of five stars, I would highly recommend.